say anything and I just ask God to help me but when I say that I can't see it's not like a permanent I can't see it lasts for about 10 seconds sometimes a little longer you know and uh, I found out I have uh, dyslexia what's it called dyslexia yeah because the words be moving and that's why sometimes I have to pause and refocus. So just be mindful of that. Y'all just pray for me. Pray for my strength um, in the Lord. And I'm going to attempt to do the um, textual reading. And then I'm going to ask my wife to come up as we go into the lesson. Amen. Okay. Uh, we're in lesson number five. And it begins and it reads uh, verse, actually, ver, uh, Judge, uh, Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with the Midianites are too many, wait a minute, are too many uh, for me to give the Midianites unto their hands. Uh, Lest Israel uh, vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand have saved me. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring down, bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for, for thee there, for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go unto thee, and to thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. And his follow answer and said, this is nothing else, says, uh, save the sword of Gideon, the son of Josh, a man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the host. Then the man of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule over, rule thou over us, both thou and thy sons, and the sons' sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hands of the Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the golden earring because they were Israelites. Amen. Now, our um, lesson text is, is Judges 7, 2, 2 through 4, and 13 through 15, and 8, 22 through 25. And the related scriptures, you can read that for yourselves. 
the golden text is uh, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interp interpretation thereof, he worshiped and returned into the host and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord had delivered deliver into your hands the host of the Midians. That's uh, Judges 7, uh, 15. Today's aim is to show that God helps, helped Gideon and his people understand that the Lord will still, the Lord was still in charge in dealing with the Midianites. The principle is to grasp the truth that God is in control of every situation we face. That's something we really have to remember. And the application is to teach that because God is in total control of our situation, we must learn and let God rule. You know, um, that is very important. And we don't do that. Let's just be honest. We don't do that. Um, let God be in control. So I'm not saying something I'm, I'm not familiar with. But for some reason, we feel like we have to help God. <laughs> we do. Well, well I, I, I know it better. I used to be like that. That's, that's why I could speak on this. But anyway, introducing the lesson. Have you ever have you ever had to uh, ride with an unsafe driver? Yep. In in such situation, uh, in, in in such situation, it might be difficult not to grab the steering wheel. Yep. And, and to take control suddenly. Uh, to take control sadly. We often act the same way with God, do we? Is that? Okay. Who, we often act like that with God, uh, who has control of our lives. We seem to think uh, he is wrong. Yep, I've been there. And we must take the will as a result uh, as a result, we, we steer the wrong way often in the opposite direction. We tend to think, we, we, we tend to think, I can't see, honey, can you come up please? Y'all just bear with me and pray. Good morning. We tend to think he is inept, and we must take the wheel. While some drivers are unsafe, we can trust in the powerful and perfect direction of God in our lives. Developing the lesson. Demonstration of the true source of strength. This is Judges chapter 7, verses 2 through 4. Gideon learned in a unique way that he had to trust God. In fact... God told Gideon, whose other name was Jerubbabel, that he wanted him to reduce his army, weeding out those who were afraid to go into battle. Okay, let, let, let me interject something here. How many times or how often God tell us to do something and we question it? We might not verbally question it, but in our actions, uh, we question it. But is this really God or is this the enemy or is this me or whatever? Knowing good and well is God telling you, don't go there. Don't call this person. Don't do that. The enemy is not going to tell you. If you're in danger, the enemy is not going to tell you. He's going to say, go, 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 go. Do, do, do. Call, call, call. But how do we recognize the voice of God? My wife. We've been together about 33 years, give or take a little. 
but unless I spend time with her, how would I get to know her? By spending time with her, even 30, over 30 years, I still don't know everything about her. I know a lot, but not everything. I know when she gets mad and not to say nothing. <laughs> I know when to go into the other room and just let her cool off. I know, I know those things, but these are little things. But how well do we know God? Mm. How well do we know the things of God when God is moving, when God is speaking to us? How well? And if you don't know God well, then you're not spending enough time with him. Let's call it for what it is. I'm telling you something I know because I used to be in that place. Everybody always had something to say. That was my attitude. Got something to say. Don't know what they're talking about. And come to realize they knew they was what they were talking about and that God was sending them to me to have you help to me do anything. After that, God told Gideon to take his men down to the water where the Lord would disclose how he would weed out even more men before they went to war with the Midianites. Okay, and, 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 and how often God told, had, has told us to leave that person alone? Pray for them, but leave them alone. Don't go back around that person. Stop hanging out with them. They mean you no good, but we know better than God. We think we do. You know, God don't really know what, well, y'all don't understand what I'm going through or what's happening. Who you trusting in, yourself or God? Who you trusting in, that person or God? Through all this, God was making it very clear that when the battle was over, the Israelites would know that it was by his strength that they had won and not their own human strength or wisdom. 22,000 men went home at first, leaving only 10,000 to go into war. Then at the water, Gideon's army was reduced to a mere 300. So we think it takes a lot of people to do the will of God. When God said, you got too many, you might only have 10. God said, too many of y'all. Jesus, in the scripture, it tells us where there's two or how many? Three. He is where? In the midst of us. So that, that's letting me know with three people, man, I could do a world of things. Jesus did it all by himself, really, if you really look at it. He used the disciples, you know, and the apostles, he used them to make a point to us that we need each other in him. We need each other. But if we really look at it, did Jesus really need anybody? He could have done it all by himself, all mm -hmm. alone, but he didn't. He incorporated us into his life that we might see that there's hope. There's hope for us. Read. Unusual assurance of victory, Judges chapter 7, verses 13 through 15. God is not limited by any circumstance. He is always in control. God has used... Here God used an enemy, soldier's dream, to let Gideon know that the Lord was still in charge and that his people would be victorious if they would trust him. This was exactly the assurance needed by Gideon who was eavesdropping. Mm -hmm. Read. Affirmation of God's rule. Judges chapter eight, verses 22 through 25. Victory often goes to our heads and makes us proud. It was not so with Gideon. The people wanted to make him their ruler, but he refused the offer. Humility marked his great man, this great man of God. Gideon pointed to the people back to the, to the God who gave him every victory. It is clear that Gideon wanted the Israelites to know that their victory came from God. Gideon told the men of Israel that the Lord alone would be their ruler. And, and we have to understand this, friends, that 
When we win, we're not winning because it's something special we've done. In all costs, at all costs, in all situations, we have to trust God. And we don't. We don't. I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I have experienced. There was many times in my life things I went through I didn't have to go through if I had just trusted God, if I had just listened to God, if I had just studied his word. But because I was disobedient, trying to do things myself, I messed up. Let's call it for what it is. I mess up. People are messing up today. There are people are going to church today, right now, thinking that I'm all right, I'm okay, and you're not living a nickel worth of dog meat. Just, just living any old kind of way. I'm, again, I'm not telling you something that I don't know. I've been there. I've been a hypocrite. I've been a liar. I've been a cheater. I've been a false accuser. But thanks be to God for giving me the victory over all of those things. Amen. I'm no longer that way. I'm victorious through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Read. Amen. All he asked for was the earrings taken from the enemy's soldiers perhaps to remind him of the victory from God. Gideon acknowledged his God for every victory he experienced and turned down the opportunity to rule the people because he knew God was the rightful ruler. Yes, please. Studying the text. I can't really see it, but just read it. Okay. Just read it. What we remember most about Gideon's call is his reluctance to accept what God was telling him. After all, he was an unknown from a rel relatively insignificant clan within the tribe of Manasseh and had apparently never been in a leadership position. However, God often chooses unexpected people for important leadership roles and then equips them to accomplish his work. That was his plan for Gideon. So, so what is actually being said God know you better than you know yourself. You think that you can go through, you can't go through, but God sees beyond that. And there's been situations in my life that I felt, you know, Lord, I, I, I'm not ready for that. I don't want that. But God opened that door for me anyway. And once I got in and started learning the basic things and the fundamental things, and start advancing, then I say, oh, okay, it's not bad as I thought. Read. Readiness. Judges, chapter 7, verses 2 through 4. Paring down the troops. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, he blew a trumpet, and Abiziah was gathered after him. Then he sent messengers throughout the Man all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. It was after this gathering of military men that Gideon did his two fleece tests with God. God assured him that he was indeed going to use Gideon for his work. This time, however, God was not going to accomplish his task in any normal way. He intended to deliver Israel in such a way that it would be obvious it was his doing and not their own. For the reason he worked with Gideon to reduce the size of his army, a sample challenge was thrown out to the gathered men. If any of them were afraid, they could leave and go back home. So God don't need a lot of people to do what he needs to do. Only thing God needs is the faithful one, those who trust him. And it took me a while to get to that place that I trust God because I've been so used to doing things myself, advancing myself, studying, you know, thinking I knew everything. Let's just be honest. But man, I made a mess of things. 
I remember when I first met my wife. You know, I tried to do everything I could in my power to impress her. <laughs> and most of us, she saw right through it. <laughs> no, let's be honest. And she didn't turn on me or anything, but we would talk. And I remember a conversation she might do, might not. But I remember she said, you don't have to be phony around me. You remember that? No, she don't remember that. <laughs> it, it, it's some things we'll never forget. And actually, that's what I was doing. You know, trying to impress her when I really didn't have to. All I had to do is be myself. And that's how we have to be with God. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to impress God. God knows our heart. He knows we need help. He knows that we are, uh, what does the song say, a wretch undone? He knows that. But when we begin to trust in him, believe in him, and allow him to mold and to shape us, we'll be all right then. Amen? Amen. Read. Probably because of the length of time they had been dom uh, dominated and because of the strength of the enemy, there was much fear among them. Can you imagine the look on Gideon's face as he watched 22,000 men leave and only 10,000 remain? While it might have been shocking to him, perhaps he, re he reasoned that 10,000 could still win, especially since they were being commissioned by God for the task. Yeah, and, and we look around, we see empty chairs, and stuff, and we wonder what happened. Don't worry about those people. Just pray for them. Mm -hmm. Like Cole Pastor says all the time, you know, these chairs are filled. Even though you can't see um, them, but angels fill them. Amen. We're not here alone. Amen. Because the scripture makes it clear. They're curious too mm -hmm. about what is it about us, these humans, that the Lord came and died for them. They're curious beings themselves. They're curious about us. So they encamp around us, whether we see them or not. They're here. Mm -hmm. And they're curious. So when pastor get up or co-pastor get up or any of the uh, ministers get up and it's not a full house, it is a full house. Amen. Because even though it might be a few of us here, but these chairs are not empty. I don't believe that. I believe there's angels among us. Amen. And the scripture even tells us there's time we entertain angels unaware. Mm -hmm. That's whether we see them or we don't see them. Amen. 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 Read. Further pairing needed. Judges chapter 7, verse 4. If Gideon was shocked that he was going to have to proceed with just 10,000 men, imagine his thoughts after God's next instruction. The Lord said... There were still too many men. We discover later that the Midianite force numbered 135,000, so it was a formidable foe that Gideon faced. To have God reduce his little army from 32,000 to 10,000 was quite a test, but now God said it needed to be reduced even more. There would be no glory for Israel from this battle. Why do you think God kept reducing? Exactly. He kept reducing uh, the army of Gideon because God wanted to get the glory. If he had kept those 10,000, guess who would have got the glory? They. They would have. Not God, but they would have gotten the glory. And like co Pastor said, God wanted the glory, and he wanted to show them. Read. Huh? Yeah, I know. Read. God instructions... God's instruction was for Gideon to take the men to the water and have them drink. He would then tell Gideon which ones should stay with him and which ones should leave for home. He did not explain what the criterion was going to be in his decision. So Gideon had to obey with simple faith. The test unknown to the men was an observation of how they drank. It appears that those who knelt down and put their faces right down to the water were separated from those who reached for water with their hands, drawing it up to their mouths to drink. Only this matter, latter group was kept. 
Gideon was left with 300 men to face an enemy army of 135,000. Confirmation, dream, Judges, chapter 7, 13. God assured Gideon by the 300 men, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. As Gideon and his men were camped on a hillside above the Midianites, God gave him more instruction to help, encourage him, and erase any fear he might have in his heart. He told Gideon to go down to the Midianite camp with his servant and listen to what was being said there. Gideon and his servant, Perua, quietly slipped down into the valley to the outskirts of the Midian camp. While there, they overheard a man telling his companion a dream he had just had. The dream was that a loaf of barley bread had come tumbling into the Midianite camp. When it reached one of the tents, it knocked it over and completely collapsed it. This man realized his dream was carrying some kind of message. He might have been repeating it to his companion because he wondered what it meant. We know God was in this entire scenario. He had commissioned his servant Gideon to lead the Israelites out from under the bondage of the Midianites in the flow of events he had even given the dream. Interpretation, Judges chapter 7, verse 14. The dream itself might have encouraged Gideon somewhat, but God also provided a powerful and very specific interpretation to give Gideon extra assurance about what he was going to do. We read what the companion of the dream dreamer said concerning the dream, but we cannot know for certain what his attitude was. He was trying to jest, or was he somewhat fearful? It seemed possible that the Midianite camp was aware that Gideon had gathered some forces to come against them, but how much was known about Gideon's army is impossible to conjure, conjecture. Maybe his, this man was making fun of the fact that Gideon was preparing to come against them with a small force of men, or maybe he sensed that God's people were a force to be reckoned with and not taken lightly. His statement was that the dream indicated the sword of Gideon was about to defeat the Midianites and turn them over to his hand. The dream spelled defeat. How many times do we or have we, you know, today even laugh within ourselves that, you know, this is not going to happen. It's not enough of us. Or I'm just one person. You're never, if you're in the Lord, you're never one person. Amen. Let's understand that. When you're in the Lord, you are never one person. Amen. And if you voice that, you're, what, what you're doing is you're looking at the outer appearance. Yes. There's really not much we can do by ourselves. Amen. We need the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need the Lord. I can't love my wife the way I should unless I have the Lord. Amen. I could try all I can within my own strength. I'll mess up and mess up and mess up, but I can't do it without the Lord. I can't love you without the Lord. You think if the Lord uh, 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 tell me to go out and stand in front of one of you because somebody getting ready to shoot a gun and I want you to take the bullet. What would my response be? I mean, let's be honest. It's like, Lord, is that you? Is that really you? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about it. And then the Lord said, I will spare your life, but I want you to take that bullet for them. And to some, that might be crazy. But those who love the Lord, that's a simple thing. Amen. Those who trust the Lord, that's a simple thing. I'm not going to do it. It's a lot of times we don't do things for each other when the Lord tells us to do it for this individual because of our attitude, because we don't trust God, or we don't even believe that it's God. God said, give them $100 not knowing they're going through something. But God said, give them $100. That ain't God. I ain't giving them nothing. Last week, they looked at me cross-eyed. <laughs> and, and 
and now the Lord telling me to give them some money? Uh-uh. How wrong could we be? And then the Lord will go even further, say, give it and don't ask for nothing back. You're not going to get it back. I will bless you. Read. I, I know time. how much time we got. It's okay. 30. Okay, read. So go, go ahead to the conclusion. Conclusion, Judges, chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. A request refused. Using very unusual tactics, Gideon led his men against the Midianites. Having stationed 300 men around the camp, Gideon had, been, had them break pitches, pitchers, blowing trumpets, and yell. God used Confusion. this. God used this unorthodox. Gideon, by them doing that, they brought confusion to the enemy. When we pray a diligent prayer, it confuses the enemy. Mm -hmm. When we're going through certain things and we still trust in God, it confuses the enemy. Mm -hmm. How could they still praise God and I don't put this thing on them? Or I did this. Even in my condition now, I'm still praising God. Amen. Even though, you know, at, from time to time I had trouble with my eyes. I can't see. And it used to bother me when God, God said, stop crying over that. Amen. I'm in control. Amen. Stop complaining about that. Mm -hmm. I'm in control. I allow this to come upon me. Mm -hmm. For what reason God has, God had it to come upon me. But he says to me, I'm your healer. I'm your deliverer, Amen. not man. Amen. So what you're going through is for my purpose, for my glory. Ah. So go Thank through it Lord. and keep your head up. I mean, that's what God told me. Amen. Stop complaining. Stop giving excuses. I'll allow this so I can be glorified. That's God. So Amen. God can be glorified. Amen. He allowed it. Amen. Okay, let's let's um, go down to the quest process. And in closing, these <laughs> Judges chapter eight, verse twenty-four through twenty-five. These verses set the scene for a very sad ending regarding Gideon. After refusing the people's request for him to rule over them, Gideon presented a request of his own. He asked that everyone bring to him all the earrings that had been taken in the plunder following their victory over the Midianites. The soldiers had no idea why this request was given, but their attitude, but their gratitude for what Gideon had done for their nation caused them to cooperate. It would be nice if the account of Gideon's life ended with this declaration that God should rule. That ought to be the desire in each of our hearts, that he be in charge of our lives. Gideon's life, however, serves not only as an example, but also as a warning. He grew in faith and accomplished a great work for God. But he also did something that was extremely harmful to both himself and the people of Israel whom he had delivered. He took the gold and made an ephod, which later was used in idol worship.